So hi, good evening, good morning. Um, so wherever you are, uh, sending my best wishes. Um, here I am here in Dharamsala. This is uh, in the evening, eight thirty p.m., which is uh, not too late. So um, I'm very happy to uh, come on this Facebook Live, and so I want to welcome everybody uh, for you know, on TWR Facebook Live. So uh, as you all know. I'm here in Dhamsala with my wife Tering, and uh, we are uh, spending some time with uh, Singe. Uh, we just got him uh, this weekend with us. So it was a wonderful time. So this afternoon, we took him back to the school. It's always a little sad to leave him, say goodbye. So, but it's very nice to able, able to be here close by and uh, visit him uh, frequently. So, tonight uh, the topic is uh, the mirror of luminous mind. Um, so basically, what I wanted to talk a little bit is, you know, this sense of... Uh, that every time in our life, whenever we experience um, a confusion, pain, a conflicts, uh, it is very difficult for us to able to maintain some kind of awareness. And uh, when we are aware, then um, it's a difficult to I say, remain in awareness when we go through these experiences. So one time a student of mine uh, came to me and told me a story. He said that when uh, before his practices, involvement in the practices, that when he have a, all the reason to be happy, he was not able to be happy. Now after all this training and practices, when he has no reason to be happy, but he is also even a suffering, he is having a deep sense of pain, but he is able to maintain a happiness deep inside when he is in pain and the confusion is happening around him, but he is able to maintain some deep sense of uh, awareness, deep sense of joy. So this is what he told me and I thought it was a great compliment because this is what actually what the teaching is talking about. So I wanted to say in Xiang uh, Yun one of the one of the very important uh, cycle of teaching in the Bern tradition, it's called Xiang Yun in in the in the Xiang Yun there is also a chapter chapter called we sell simji melon, the mirror of luminous mind. So basically, it means uh, um, the luminous mind. It's like a mirror. Uh, when one is able to maintain the awareness, then there is a lot of uh, a benefit. Um, and one of the benefit is about like a being. Uh, able to remain aware while one is in the situation in the pain. So this is the this is the main point that I'm trying to say. <clears throat> the point is that when when you are in pain, when you are experiencing a confusion, um, are you able to? maintain some kind of awareness? Are you able to maintain some sense of joy, a connection to the joy when you are sad? Are you able to maintain some kind of clarity when you are totally confused? Are you able to feel some kind of inner strength when you feel 
a weakness, uncertainty situations in your life? Are you able to feel some kind of power when you're feeling a weak? Are you able to feel, maintain some kind of uh, kindness or love when you are disappointed and when you are angry? Basically, are you able to maintain certain degree of a qualities, enlightened qualities, a virtuous quality when you are, you know, when you're in your life, when you're experiencing the opposite experiences, opposite experiences like a sadness and so on. So that is a very important question. Most of the time in our life, we think these are totally two different things. We think about a white and black, a good and bad. We think possible and impossible. We don't think there is any kind of a middle a place. Uh, this is very. This is how our life is. We we look at the situation very dualistic way. And unfortunately, uh, when many of time in our life, we do spend more time in our pain body, pain speech, pain mind, uh, and particularly without not even being aware. Uh, we are constantly getting very much uh, deep caught up with these situations. So, so when you are in your life, many, most of the time we, we are trapped in this pain. We are trapped in this pain identity. We are trapped in this uh, voice conflict or pain speech. And uh, also, Many times we are not aware that we are in trap in that, and then we we don't f hope anything other than what we are experiencing, or we think about I have to completely, um, how you say, able to be f renounce completely our sadness in order to be joy. I have to be totally free from sadness in order to feel joy. I have to get rid of pain in order to feel joy and some kind of, I have to reject the pain, I have to fight against the pain, uh, I have to, yeah, so some sense of very a negative uh, approach toward our pain in order to, to, to feel some sense of freedom and joy. So this is very much, very often in our life, we, we fight. We put a lot of effort. Uh, yeah, basically, life is very much about like struggling toward unvirtuous situations, and that struggle itself, it is not a virtue. Struggle itself does not opens any door toward uh, a virtuous quality. S struggle itself is an effort, and effort is obstacle. Obstacle for accessing that wisdom and those qualities. So this, this is what we experience in everyday life. So the, my question here, tonight's question is, it's like, a, is it possible? Is it possible? Can you hope for that not losing connection to yourself and to the joy when you are in pain? So, now, now I'm more like talking directly to uh, all of you who are or who feels this moment in your life that you are in some sense of in pain, physically in pain, emotionally in pain, pain in relationship towards certain situations, towards somebody, those who are in that situation. My question to you is, can you think about able to maintain connected, able to maintain some sense of joy, still some sense of joy there?
So, so just those who are in pain, sense of suffering, my question to you is joy. So keep that question for a moment in your heart, then you reflect on it. Let's talk about another situation. Those you feel totally confused, can you still maintain connected? Can you still access clarity in the middle of, of this confusion? I'm going to explain how, but these are individual questions to different people. Those you are angry at some situation, those you are angry at somebody, or angry at even to yourself, can you imagine, feel, think of possibility that still maintain connected and hold a sense of warmth and love toward yourself or toward that person? A particular person. Those you feel a weakness, uncertainty, this moment in your life, and you feel like a very difficult, impossible, can you still able to feel connected and able to feel a connection to the source and feeling some strength. It is like an example in a Dzogchen tradition. The example is given like a lotus. Pema damne tombashi. Like a lotus flowering in the middle of muds muddy water. A lotus, a growing in beautiful lotus, pure, clean, clear, spotless, a beautiful lotus flower growing in the middle of muddy water. So the muddy water is what you're experiencing. Your confusion is that muddy water. Your anger is that muddy water. Your weakness is that muddy water. Your sadness, pain is that muddy water. But can you still access, see and feel the lotus flower, which is not touched by any dirt, any muddy water? which is not touched. So if you look at the lotus flower, each single petals, they are spotless, pure, clean, and radiating. So this is the same. So your essence is like that lotus. But your surrounding is like the, that muddy water. So the big question is, at the same time, simultaneously, can you access and feel and connect it and benefit from that lotus flower, from that pureness of that flower, even though these other experiences are happening around you. So this is the question here. So I wanted to <clears throat> just guide a short meditation. So all of you in each one of your particular cases, whatever the situation, this moment in your life,
whatever kind of muddy water, just trying to be conscious. Just breathe out three times, deep breathing out three times. Be awareness, be aware of the stillness in your body, feel the stillness in your body. Feel and be aware of the silence in your speech. Be aware of the spaciousness, openness in your mind, in your heart. and feel connection to the Cyber Sangha or 300 people are watching this moment, participating this moment. Feel the connection to all. Send support to everyone. Open your heart. Send support to everybody. Be open and feel you're receiving support from everybody. A connection to the sacred Cyber Sangha. Through the stillness, silence, and spaciousness. Fully rest in this stillness, silence, spaciousness. Let drop all your efforts, effort in every single cell in your body, let it drop down. Be aware of the effort, let the effort drop. Be aware of the effort in certain areas of the body, let it drop down. Be aware of the effort in certain areas of speech, let it drop down.
Be aware of any dualistic effort in your mind. Let it drop down. Let all the effort drop down one by one and feel that we are all supporting each other to drop let go of these inner efforts of body, speech, and mind and completely come to our effortless, a restful, a healing place. And breathing, it's a wonderful way of supporting it by exhaling every effort you detect and resting deeper after every exhalation that you are entering deeper and deeper into that stillness, silence, spaciousness and more you enter deeper into it, more we are connecting with more people, with each other. So be aware of this pure, like a pure lotus. And at the same time, be aware of the surrounding. Confusion, pain, whatever that you're experiencing, be aware of that. You are accessing the pure lotus. It's clear. It's a pure, spotless. It's still, it is silence, it's boundless, it's expanded. But you're also aware of your pain. You're also aware of your sadness. You are also aware of your confusion. You are also aware of a certainty in your life, a weakness. You are aware of them. They are like a dynamic energy. They are just simply presence 
in that boundless space. You are aware of both. In a way, they are both complementing each other. You are not losing one because of the other. You are strengthening, finding one because of the other. You are strengthening one because of other. You are stabilizing in that state of stillness because of the manifestation. Because manifestations are dynamic energy. Is a, do you hear the sound okay? Because some some of people saying sound is not clear. So let me know if the sound is uh, clear, okay. Mariella, please let me know if the sound is clear. <clears throat> Thank you. So what I'm saying here is that pure awareness is complementing the, the con confusions around you or the experience of this confusion and pain and sadness, uncertainty, weakness is also in some sense becoming a door access ornament to that mirror-like wisdom. Most of the time in our life, we think there is no option. I very often, some, sometimes students come to me and say, I'm so confused, so confused. It basically, like, it seems like a, one gets totally destroyed by the confusions or one get totally destroyed or destroy oneself or destroy others because of the anger. Or one get totally get lost because of a darkness, a sense of disconnectedness. So, the negative emo experiences of negative emotions somehow become so strong that it seems like uh, no hope. But it does not become to everybody like that. For some people, clearly, these strong negative emotions becomes a door opportunity. Uh, it's like a weight lifting. When you lift the weight, you have to lift the heavy weight in order to gain, gain the muscle, build the muscle. So these negative emotions becomes a tool to developing a wisdom, not obstacle. But sometimes we don't see that, we don't feel that. It just becomes very destructive. So this is the question. Why is somebody able to manage? Why is somebody is not able to manage? Can I manage? Am I managing this moment? Because every given moment, we all go through some moments. One time a friend of mine told me a story. He said, you know, he was in the, in the dark retreat and a one single thought came. A thought about the death death of oneself and for days and weeks cannot get rid of that one single thought. It was destroying. You cannot see the daylight very well, you cannot enjoy the taste of food very well, you cannot 
appreciate the company of a friend, a, a family. You don't see, you don't hear, you don't feel because you're so obsessed with the idea of death. It could be anything. Anything. We all know very well it could be anything, any silly topic that becomes so serious. We go crazy, totally go crazy with that. But it dominates you completely. You lose the connection to the source. You lose the connection to that clarity. You lose the connection to that strength. You lose the connection to that warmth and kindness. You lose the connection to that joy, that compassion. You lose because you don't feel that moment. There's, there's no access to it. But oh, of course, access is there. It's still there. So what is happening? Because you are, one, 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 one thing very important to remember is you are focusing on that pain and negativity too strong. You don't trust enough to the openness. You don't look for any other solution. You, you don't even try to be aware of it. You are so focused on one thing. Of course, sometimes people say, people say, well, no, that's not true. I try. But it's not working. Well, this is not about trying. Trying is the effort. And effort is the block. It's about being and accessing to the source, not disconnecting, putting effort and trying to connect to the source. No. A sense of being. Even, for example, very simple example, it's like a, we all have many times sleep disorders have a problem with sleeping. Of course, I'm sure there are many, many different factors. And for personally, sometimes for myself, when I have little difficulties like that, I try to bring a lot of awareness into my body. I try to journey into my body. I try to, like a, it's like doing an X-ray, scanning my body, and I'm detecting at different places of retention, very deep. And I'm like, a, it's like, a, as I said earlier, and during the meditation, I'm being aware of one area of my body that effort is there. I let it go. I'm entering deeper into my body connecting deeper into my body. I'm being aware of some deeper level of effort. Breathing out, I'm letting it go. I can feel like a diff the structure of my body, the different areas of my body, like a dropping, dropping, like a dissolving, like a salt, a drop of water, dissolving it. Another soul, drop of water, dissolving. I just feel like a dissolving, dissolving, dissolving to the point I don't feel there's no more place to go. I hit the bottom. I hit the space. I hit the ground. I hit the base. We call Zhi. The abiding base. I hit that. And that moment is like a boom. I'm resting. I, I fall asleep. I wake up with so much energize, so much freshness. 
because in my body I'm not wasting any energy, my biological energy, by putting effort into gaining nothing. Many times, very unconscious efforts in our body, or our speech and our mind, we're kind of losing the energy. Not only losing energy, we're not even able to rest deep enough. Neither, no, neither during the daytime nor in the night. So it's always about resting deeper, and when you rest deeper, then you feel access to both. So tonight's topic is very much about accessing both to the source and manifestation. So now my question to all of you is, how was the meditation? You, you all know that I like to have a feedback, like to know if you're practicing or not, and I like to know if what I'm talking is making sense or not, like to know that this, this short meditation did work or not. I love to know that, that you are going to work on this continuously um, afterward. Relaxing, that's good. So the question is, can you, can you still access? No matter how much painful it is, can you still access to the source and some joy? No matter how much confusion is, can you still access to clarity? One time, another student of mine told me a story. He said, this year my father passed away. It was a very challenging year for him. But the ah protected him. The syllable ah protected him. Basically, the, uh, the sense of inner space was so strong presence that he was able to accommodate, host these pain of lo loss of the father in the space. So he was able to maintain connection to the space, able to accommodate these experience in that space, able to process these emotion in that space. The space ah, was great protection that year when there this moment of loss. So that means it's very difficult losing a father, very painful, but never lost the access to that space which accommodated and processed the emotion of loss. That is, what I, that is what I'm trying to talk tonight here. And for some people, for some people, it is difficult to access to that space, access to that pure lotus, because the mud takes over the flower. Mud becomes like this, this flower, the petals becomes muddy. So the, my question here is to all of you is, how was it? Question is, is it possible to access? I mean, it's really like a, some sense of deep sense of trust, right? A deep sense of trust. Oh, is it possible? Is it possible for me? Can I try? In fact, I am going through craziness right now. Can I try now? Do you trust enough yourself? Do you see other possibility? Can you try now? That, these are good questions because many times people give up. They give up. 
They gave up hopes. They get totally lost into that one single strong emotion that they are experiencing any given moment. They get lost, fully lost. Of course, sometimes they get lost, so, so much lost, like this student of mine, which, which says that, you know, sometimes when you have every reason to be happy, you, you are not able to be happy. When you have every reason to feel strong, and you are not able to feel strong. When you have every reason to be like a loving, you are not able to love. When you have every reason to laugh, you are not able to laugh. But sometimes, some other people, they have every reason to be sad, but they are able to be happy. Some people, when they have every reason to complain, but they smile. with gratitude. So the circumstances, objective circumstances, does not define your experiences. Because we always think our life should be defined by circumstances. Not. Circumstances for sure affect us. But they don't have to affect us all the time, completely. No, they don't. You can change them. Because your access to the Source, your access to that pure Lotus, unobscured, Un, not polluted clarity, the strength, your access to that is always there regardless of the circumstances, to trust that. They might not be the same way, but they are there. So, just to conclude that whatever you're experiencing this moment, difficult moment, if you feel, this difficult moment is your opportunity to know this is not it. This is not only experience. And this is not going to need to stay continuously like that. Not even for one more hour. It does not have to be like this. You have the power to change it. You can change it. You can transform it completely. You can overcome it. And it can become your source. It can become your strength. You know, we go to the the, to go to this, what, what do you call like this, uh, uh, shops to buy these weights. Uh, you know, we pay them to lift the weights in order to build the muscles. We pay every month a monthly fee to the, go to the gym to build strength in different parts of your body. In this case, your inner strength, your spiritual strength, your spiritual muscles, you don't have to pay anybody because those weights are always available to you. Every given moment you're experiencing them. Its only question is, are you able to use them as your strength builder or not? So it's your, so it's your opportunity, what I'm saying, it's your opportunity, this sadness is the door to the joy. This this confusion is door to the clarity. 
This weakness is your door to the strength. The anger is door to your love. And way to experience it in that very moment when you're experiencing it, know the, the presence of the source is still there and accessing it through three precious pills. So it's not intellectually, I hope that you, you have some glimpse of experiences. So my prayers with all of you, whatever circumstances you are living in this moment, no matter what time zone, no matter what in which space you are in, we are all connected. The connection of Cyber Sangha is there. It's, a, it's a, just a matter of feeling that openness, connection, and trusting and receiving benefit from these connections. That's all what it is. And most importantly, tr trusting your own ability to access to the source and to the qualities, no matter what negative emotions that you are experiencing. So I wish you all a success journey into discovering pure lotus, regardless of the muds around it. Okay, and thank you very much. And I, since like, I'm so glad that, you know, tonight I am actually, usually last time when I was in Dharamsala, I was uh, in uh, Norbu house. Uh, very uh, beautiful place, uh, very generous, the owner very, very generous, uh, who offered their space and off, offer the office internet connection in the middle of the night to, to uh, able to me to able to do this uh, Facebook live. But today, now in India is not that bad, you know, like this, uh, actually a little a connection this is a little uh, gadget here, internet router, I guess, and uh, I am in place where Tevin and where we were staying here, just able to do with this little thing here. So I'm really happy that it did not interrupt, and uh, and I I love this, <laughs> and so I will be happy to continuously do some more while I'm here and I don't uh, but I will definitely make announcement on the Facebook so just please uh, just uh, uh, watch on the Facebook announcement on my Facebook page and whenever you hear a news new date and time and let all your other friends know also so thank you very much all my love and blessings to all of you Thank you.